this game, it was a lot different. You got off to the good start. You held the lead for, I would say, probably 80% of yeah. this game, if not even more than that. How significant was the start in having that first half lead? Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, when you're playing, you know, some of these other teams in the league that have had the perennial success they have had, um, I, your, your start is so critical because it – Human nature, right, is when it's a team that just wins and wins and wins, right? If they jump off to an early start, it's hard to believe that you can battle that back, right? And, and just be able to, you know, like Cal, we were down, you know, 14 points in, in nine plays, right? So being able to start fast and play fast, right, and the, the, the way that both sides of the ball came out and played physical football right right off rip, I, I think that really showed I mean, they weren't, they weren't t intimidated by the name. And that's something we kind of talked about all week long, right, was the opportunity to just come out and play our style of football and not you, – you can't lose to a logo. And I feel like there are times, you know, that, that that has happened within the history of our program, especially since I've been here. There are times in those matchups that you kind of hope things go your way, but we don't make them go. And tonight, Sean, I really felt like we made things go our way. We weren't waiting for the next opportunity, you know what I mean, to give it away or to make something happen. I mean, think about Taz's fumble at the end of the game. In so many moments, right, and I would challenge a lot of people even watching her in the stands, that probably felt like a maybe here we go again type moment, right? But I'll tell you on the sidelines, it didn't feel that way. They were locked in. The energy stayed the same. The belief was there. And, uh, and, and so that's why I think that start the way we did – allowed us to have confidence for four quarters. Wait, I just want to interrupt you. Coach, you want to read that email? Let's go, Shu. I love watching our guy. Fardan Allen, my go. guy. Fardan Allen. <laughs> love you, man. You made this stuff possible, man. You laid that foundation. We heard from Nario Walks uh, throughout. He was uh, very impressed by Musa Thomas. Oh, especially he played well. Yep. Running 30, 30 yards down the field in coverage. Uh, I know that the offense has been kind of maligned this year. I mean, you made an offensive coordinator change the numbers are still near the bottom of the conference but it felt like today that side of the ball really played maybe its best game of the season Hayden Teska seemed like maybe he played his best game of the season what did you like most from the offense uh, just our energy and our uh, the way that we came out and attacked every single play to just to just play you know I think throughout the season this year so far we've had games where certain position groups uh weekly might have played well but like we didn't play well as a unit you know i think today we played so well as a unit and that allowed us to just believe in one another to do our jobs um from start to finish you know and, and i really felt like um uh, they had a lot of belief uh i i think you know we played really really well uh, it, it felt like honestly at every position up front being able to handle you know really really good defensive line uh i, I thought our receivers on the perimeter were able to make a lot of separation uh and, and give hayden good opportunities and obviously hayden played you know really well too i, I think you're going to see that uh one thing coach holzer is doing you know uh, honestly super well and i know that you know numbers are what they are from where we were last year it doesn't in the building feel anything like it did last year and i know we've had some struggles weekly whatever that is but he's doing such a great job of distributing the football to different areas tight ends having catches right dialing up some some plays to get guys package situations where so many guys are involved in the game plan that it's so much easier to be uh, kind of locked in right throughout the entire week and, 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 and be able to have a role um, throughout the offense. So I think Coach Holzer is doing an unbelievable job with this offense. Even the best offensive coordinator in football history typically isn't going to find a way to convert on a third and 22, but all your team had to do is hand it off to your running back as Kyron Craig had picked that up. That kept a drive alive that I believe led to the, the yeah. go-ahead yep. touchdown. Yep. He had a monster performance today. He, he finishes with 143 yards, two touchdowns, and then added that receiving touchdown as well. It, it seems like he's getting better and better. I know it was kind of a timeshare at times with he sure. and McGriff, but what he did today kind of established himself as maybe one of the best running backs yeah, in the conference. Yeah, no doubt. And I think, uh, you know, again, not taking anything away from, from Kyron. He's an unbelievable runner. I think, you know, I would say what Coach Holzer is doing on mixing the zone series up, you know, on that play, you know, did we call it expecting a third and 20, right, conversion? Probably not, right? Like setting up the game situation um, to, to, to be able to, you know, play for maybe another possession, right? But because he's been switching up how we're running the ball in the box, they fit it differently for inside zone, and that's what opened up the C-gap for Kyron to hit it, and all those backers overlap. So, again, Kyron made an unbelievable play, but I think a lot of the calls and how he's calling a game has helped setting up some of these opportunities. You have to be honest here. I know you're pretty honest with me. Fourth down, your team's trying to get that final stop to close it out. What were you thinking when that ball was in the air? Uh, you know, 
I, you saw in the timeout when I pulled the team out. And, and you know I'm an honest human being. I pulled the team out and told them, we got it when this ball is incomplete. Nobody can leave these sidelines. We can't have a penalty on that. We've got to just expect this play is going to go our way. And so, Sean, honestly, when that ball was in the air, I, it was hard personally to choke back tears because I knew we were about to have the biggest, one of the biggest wins in school history, um, beating this team for the first time ever um, and, and being able to really get our program on track. So I believe we were going to get out of that, man, and be able to get victory formation out and, and go 1-0 today. Uh, the crowd here, I know you love playing at home, and so they had plenty to cheer about today. Yeah. Uh, how much does that help when you have the, cr the home crowd behind you? Oh, it's you? huge. It's huge. And being able to get that energy, that enthusiasm, that excitement. I mean, you guys saw us at Clarion, right? When we're able to play with that energy throughout, you conversely saw us even at home against Gannon, where energy was non-existent, right? Um, it is so critical to be able to have that energy and play with that juice. Fans don't think about it right but you think one of the and i know you know they're not as dominant as they had been no idea what they did today but one of the the best coaches in college football being nick saban right the article that came out about him on friday was him asking the fans to bring the energy to help them defeat tennessee like that's real that home field advantage that again that electricity that the fans can provide for the energy spark that's absolutely real and that's part of why we love playing at home I know you've already said that uh, this is a massive win for the program, but kind of put it in perspective because you beat IUP for the first time. We'll see how it goes from here. Obviously, yep. you want to keep building, but does this kind of establish what you want Seton Hill football to be about today? For sure. And, and I wanted, you know, I wanted it earlier, Sean, and I know the players did too, right? We wanted success quicker than we've had it, but... I Man, so goes life. Like, things don't always go the way that you want them to, right? But what I'll give our guys credit for is to continue to just chip away and continue to come out and work, continue to, as hard as it's got to believe, to be at times, to believe that foundation we've laid, it's there. And a win like this really helps cement why we do things the way we do and how we can continue to build moving on that. You know, moving forward, I, I, this is, it's, it's monumental. I mean, I don't want to understate it. And I know, you know, uh, IUP's had their struggles this year as well. But to, to be 0-9 against that team and, and come out and get this win today um, on the heels of losing a cow the way we did, I think it just gives us so much energy and opportunity to build moving forward. Well, congrats on this one today. Go enjoy it. I know that uh, you're going to be focused pretty soon on – the next game but i would say at least for 24 hours you need to soak this one in. yes sir yep right. thank you and keep thank you guys everybody watching all the support i appreciate it we built this for you thank you make sure you keep coach dave Kiefer in line for the rest <laughs> yeah, of the day we'll as you well. know that's impossible all right dan day head coach for thank seat hill after his team for the first time ever knocks off iup